While on the subject of labour shortages, one of the critical employment shortfalls is for engineers. And it doesn't matter what type of engineer you think about. In every area, there are simply not enough of them. Think mechanical, chemical, mining, environmental, civil, aerospace, electrical, software. The list just goes on and on and on. But Australia is simply not creating enough of them to cope with our fast-growing population, the infrastructure that's required, and especially for the energy transition. I spoke earlier with Romilly Madhu, CEO at Engineers Australia. So 50% of skilled migrant engineers who are in here in Australia now are likely your Uber drivers. Uh, next time you get in an Uber, ask them, uh, because there's also unconscious bias in the industry. So, we so I, found, I found this in Adelaide, strangely, where they said to me that every second Uber driver or taxi driver in Adelaide right now, for some reason, is an engineer. Mm. So what craziness has this country got that we don't recognise those people's skills? It's unconscious bias, you know, it's they didn't study here or they might not know the local networks uh, and also they might not understand the standards that we have. And we're very conscious of that because of the skill shortage we have. We have a 50,000 skill shortage in engineers currently and we know that that's going to increase. 80% of placements are looking for engineers and there's just so many jobs out there looking for engineers. So coming back to the skilled migrants, uh, what it is is... We, as Engineers Australia, are helping them get uh, internships or placements, teaching them the standards and trying to help them with their pathway into these roles because it is just, uh, at the moment, uh, we're at capacity and we, we don't have enough engineers. For but this compromises Australia's economic growth going forward. The energy transition is one where we've spoken with the former chief executive of Snowy Hydro 2.0 who says because of trying to get the transmission lines in, you know, you haven't done deals over, over land to get that in. But if you don't have the engineers on top of that, you just can't build this stuff. That's the problem. So that's exactly right. It has a direct impact to the economy. These major projects that you've mentioned uh, will be slow to be delivered, uh, will be m more expensive because it takes a longer time to deliver them because we're trying to share all these engineers around all these jobs. So it has a direct impact to the economy. OK, so then you've got to give incentive for Australian kids at school to study the sciences, to go to university, to become engineers. I mean, it's going to be a steady stream of work for them if they can achieve that. But you've actually got to interest them in the job and not all becoming playwrights or poets or whatever they want to become. It's a couple of things. So one is to really elevate the importance of engineering and showing that there are different elements of engineering. It's not just hard hats and high-vis high vests. Not that I there's love. anything wrong with that. No, well, I love it. I love a site visit and I love a hard hat and high-vis vest. But it's also mechatronics, robotics, AI, uh, green and blue engineering. There's just so many different elements of engineering. So ensuring, firstly, they do maths and science. Uh, and that's also interesting enough for girls. Most girls choose engineering because there's an engineer in the family. So if we look at socioeconomic issues, then we're missing out on a whole lot of amazing engineer, uh, potential engineers because we, they don't know what an engineer is. So you really can't be what you can't see. So firstly, it's getting into the schools and we have lots of programs that do that to highlight, you know, be an engineer, we're the problem solvers uh, and there's great opportunities uh, about being an engineer. Then the next one is being more flexible when they get to university. It is a four-year degree and we see that the attrition rates are dropping and being more flexible about, well, if you didn't get those marks, then do summer study so we can still get them into university, not just say, oh, sorry, no, you didn't, you didn't do maths or you didn't do science, so you can't come. So just thinking about this, the other option is if we can't generate an, an, enough engineers ourselves, we are in a fortunate position where we can attract them from overseas. Come to Australia, great place to live, you can earn good money, you know, there's great work here. But again, those skills have got to be recognised and we've got to figure out which engineers we want and where they're going to achieve those goals. So we know which engineers we want and where we want them. Um, firstly, interestingly enough, 60% of working engineers in Australia were born overseas. Wow. So we already get a, most of our pipeline is coming from so, overseas. So I'm just sitting there, that says to me that our education system has failed us it as is. Australians. Because we no longer re make you do maths at, in HSC or final year level. It used to be compulsory to do maths and science. It's no longer compulsory. If you look at where Australia sits on the OECD levels and all other global levels, we have fallen when it comes to both studying maths, level of maths and the um, comp competency of our maths teachers. So we've 
really fall in. So the first thing is we need to be making sure maths is compulsory. Um, secondly, it's really showing them what the potential of engineering is and, and really highlighting those, those obvious opportunities for our kids. Because you think about even in the private sector, so we're thinking also partly about building the country out and doing infrastructure, um, creating sort of, if you like, the energy transition. But then I think of something basic, even coming to driverless vehicles in the future, their whole transport system and road system has to be redevised. Think about the infrastructure that's going on, the big transport systems going in our capital cities right now. Every one of these, these projects starts and ends with an engineer. Engine. So uh, medical technology. Yes. Uh, just think about technology itself. You know, I'd mentioned AI and robotics. They all need engineers. Everything you do in your life relies on an engineer. So it really is about having stopping the leaky pipeline, so making sure we get the kids into universities and that we attract our skilled migrants into roles and that they come to Australia and they're welcomed. The other one really is the culture within engineering and making sure that we keep women in engineering. So at the moment, only 16% of our students are female and only 14% of our, our engineers are female. And if you compare that to, again, globally, our numbers are woeful. So we need to make sure that we're really looking at attracting 50% of the population into engineering. It's a great career, so many opportunities across so many different facets. Uh, and, they, you know, it's, it's a great career. It's almost learning. like a waste of brain oh, power, isn't it, it more it, than anything yeah. else? So that's the thing. But it's got to be made attractive that it's not going to be an unwelcomed environment. But so many other industries have actually already gone down that path. The mining industry is one of those. And property as well. I know when I started in property, the number of women in property was very low. Mm. And they, you know, worked with male champions of change and really increased the number of women in leadership roles in property. There are so many great examples of what you can do to increase the number of women. And it is on everyone's mind, but we need to move faster and we need to amplify our effort. And do you sense when you talk to Canberra, and you obviously do often, that they recognise the urgency? Or is it a, well, we'll see how we go, we'll take our time? What happens there? Federal government definitely understand the urgency. If you just think about AUKUS alone in the budget when they were talking about um, and announcing AUKUS, uh, Minister Pat Conroy said we need an additional 4,000 engineers and we're going to be working with ANU and University of New South Wales. So very pragmatic and practical in jumping straight in. Uh, we are concerned about finding the actual physical people, but, but they were very quick to say this is what we need and this is when we need them. Uh, there's a number of re reviews. I know Mary O'Kane, who's an engineer, is doing a review into um, universities and study, and that's really important as well because we need to make sure... It's not like it was in the days we were at university. It needs to be flexible. There needs to be different pathways into university, different approaches. And I know that that study is underway and we've been um, actively involved in those. Well, Romilly, let's just keep on this in the future and get you coming back just to see where the progress lies to push this. Because from a business point of view, from a government point of view, but just from a national economy point of view, this is one of the great deficiencies that needs to be fixed. Romilly Madhu, many thanks for your Thank time. Thank you so much.